Now we're going to see a move from the top of the side body or top of the cross body called the scissor side arm bar. We call this move the scissor side arm bar because you scissor your legs toward your opponent's head. So it's a scissor side arm bar from side body position. So here I am in side control. I'm controlling his head with my elbow and my knee tight together. This hand would be on this side if I'm worried about the guy kneeing me in the face. Or if I'm more concerned about him recomposing the guard and putting me back between the legs, my hand could be on this side. Now the first key reference point, I'm going to scissor my hip toward his head. So the way this is going to look, I'm just going to put both hands here so we can easily see it. The reference point is that I'm going to bring my right leg through and my left leg back. So I'm scissoring towards his head. My legs have switched positions. The leg that was in the high position close to his head has gone in the low position close to his hip. And the leg that was in the low position close to his hip has gone into the high position close to his head. And here and here, and I turn my hips. Now, the first key reference point, before I turn, I need to make sure I have control over this arm so my opponent won't go to my back. So I'm going to bring my elbow inside the crook of his arm and with five digits control his bicep. My elbow is planted on the ground. My next key reference point, I'm going to slide my low leg, the low leg closest to his hip, up his body and knock his arm out as I scissor my hips. So I've scissored my hips toward his head, and now I've isolated his arm. There's no way for the guy to get this arm back inside and on the floor. My next key reference point, I control this arm with my armpit. So I'm kind of grabbing with my back muscles and my armpit here. I'm going to use a C-clamp grip and control the bone of his arm. So I'm controlling this arm with my five-digit grip, my elbows on the ground. The other arm I'm controlling with that C-clamp grip right at the bone of the elbow. Now I need to pass my leg over his head to finish this arm bar. So especially if you have longer legs, you're going to want to scoot your hips a little bit. I'm going to push off this foot and move my hips down towards his hips. Now my next key reference point, I make a small scissor of my legs and I pass my other leg over his head. From here, the next key reference point, I want to control his head. So I walk heel toe, heel toe, heel toe until my heel is underneath his neck here. My shin bone wants to be straight up and down for my next key reference point. From this position, my next key reference point, I'm going to bring my left elbow back. So I'm kind of squeezing his arm using my back muscles. Now it's almost going to feel like you can make your opponent tap from this position. But obviously I know if he's a much you know, stronger guy, if I was a much weaker guy, that, that alone wouldn't be sufficient to make a proper arm bar. So now with his arm, I've got this good pressure on his arm, I'm gonna add leverage. I add the leverage by driving my hips forward towards his elbow and leaning my shoulders slightly back. My weight is on his hips. And notice I've kept my weight on him. So now I drive my hips forward and lean back with my shoulders to make him submit and tap from the arm bar. So now let's see some common mistakes from the scissor side armbar. The first common mistake is going to involve the scissoring of the hips. I want to make sure before I scissor, I have to control this opposite arm. Now, there's two ways I could control it. My elbow could be on the ground here and I'm cupping his arm. The point is he can't slide in that direction because my elbow blocks the slide. Another way I could control is by grabbing his shoulder. And again, the same thing applies. If he tries to slide down the mat, my arm catches him from moving. Now, a common mistake here would be to turn and scissor without controlling this arm. And notice, he can go right to my back from that position and attack my neck. So to ensure that this doesn't happen, before you scissor your hips, you can control this arm. 
The next common mistake is scissoring and not getting the arm out. So sometimes people just scissor here. And notice I don't have his arm in an extended position. So to prevent that from happening, I slide my knee right along his body. It's just sliding up underneath his armpit, and it's going to knock this arm out. So I'm here as I scissor my hips. I slide, and I knock the arm out. The next common mistake would be not to make a deep scissor. A lot of people kind of do something like this. You know, it's not a very good scissor position. With my leg down, the guy could roll me in this direction. So the next mistake here would be scissoring and not moving this arm away from his body. So maybe I'm here, and I do this, and I just kind of scissor my hips and turn. And notice his arm's not in a position to armbar. If I try to grab his arm and pull it up, he can engage his back muscles. There's no way I'm going to get his arm up to a position I could armbar him. So I want to make sure when I scissor my hips, my leg literally slides right up his body and knocks this out. This right leg, my low leg, slides as I scissor and knocks his arm out. So I want to make sure here that I scissor, bring my knee almost underneath his shoulder to isolate this arm in this position. The next common mistake would be to make a shallow scissor, do something like this. And now I can't pass this leg over his head. So make sure when you scissor, you bring the low leg all the way to the high position and the high leg all the way back. Now, another common mistake is to put this knee down. And if the guy starts to teeter-totter from this position, I'm going to get tossed. So I want to make sure my foot's flat and my knee's in the air. Now if he goes to teeter-totter, I have a good base right here to keep him from reversing that position. The next common mistake here would be trying to pass this leg over the head with kind of a short step. I need to re-scissor. So I scissor a little bit here as I pass my leg over. Now, if I'm too far underneath his shoulder, I'm not going to be able to get the scissor to work. So what I want to make sure I do is move a little bit towards his hips, especially if you have longer legs. So I push off this leg and I move back towards his hip. This allows this leg to easily pass. If I stay way up here, there's no way for me to pass my leg. So I want to move down in this position. And again, the next mistake would be just throwing this leg over without scissoring this leg. I want to make a small scissor pass my leg over here. Makes it very easy. Okay, now another common mistake would be to lift up here as you scissor. And notice here, he could start to make me face his legs where he could kick or recompose the guard or whatever. So as I scissor, to prevent that, I want to make sure that I keep my weight on his hips as I pass my leg over. I'm controlling here. I scissor my legs. I keep my weight pressed on his hips. I'm kind of on the outside ball of that foot, on the pinky side, pressing in towards his hips. Okay, now the next mistake is going to involve this leg. If this leg's out on the mat, he can just bring his head out of the move. So as I'm controlling his arm, I want to make sure I walk heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, and I put my heel directly underneath his neck. This brings us to the next mistake. A lot of people do this move like this, kind of put this underneath his neck, and I lose the position to drive my hips. I'm losing leverage to do that. So I want to make sure that this shin bone stays straight up and down so that my hips, you see how far my hips can go forward for the arm bar. If I can make him tap here, if I needed to, I can compound fracture the arm by driving with my hips. So I want to make sure I have the ability to add that leverage. So I'm here and here. Another common mistake here would be to wrap the arm rather than hold the elbow. If you wrap the arm, my own elbow starts to block my leg from going over his neck. It's kind of kind of hard to get this position. If I control his elbow, my elbow is farther back. makes it very easy for me to throw this leg over his head. The next common mistake once I'm here is trying just to use the hips and having this arm loose. With every submission, I always have to have pressure first. So I pull my elbow back and I engage my back muscles. It's almost going to feel like he's going to tap from this position. Now the next common mistake here is just to lean back with the shoulders. I want to make sure I drive my hips straight towards his arm as I lean back with my shoulders here to make him tap.